Hey guys, I want to welcome everybody to the first edition of Sports Memos Pro Football Forecast. I'm your host, world champion handicapper, Las Vegas' biggest daily sports better, Joe D'Amico. We are excited to come to you each week during the football season on behalf of the most exciting website on the planet, Sports Memo. Guys, every show you're going to receive a slew of free plays in pro football. Each week you can expect nothing but winners information, entertainment, and laughs as we feature a rotating panel of some of the most respected handicappers on the planet. We'll also share some discussions on current events in sports and sports betting. Today's show, I am so honored to be here, have a great panel. Today's show features my man, Jesse Shule, you know him as you capper, Ronald Kabang, from, Do- from Wager Talk, Andy Lang, and our NFL aficionado, Kevin Browdus. So proud to have you all on show, guys. Welcome. This show, guys, is going to answer two big questions for everybody out there. Number one, what do I bet on in NFL? And number two, which panel members are actually wearing pants during this show? My money is, my money is, me and maybe Andy are the only two that are wearing pants. But as a betting man, I'm not. I'm just going to throw that out there. No, guys, with NFL, with no NFL this weekend, we weren't going to forget about pro football. Sorry, guys, I couldn't help myself. This is Storm of the Show. We'll be giving out ton of a ton of NFL futures. I'd like to go right into the NFL futures. I want to welcome our NFL aficionado. I want to start off with him because I really want to know that what he's talking about in NFL and what he wants to give out because I know all of our listeners out there really, really, really are standing on edge to know what Kevin brought us is going to bring you for NFL futures. Kevin, welcome. All right, thanks, Joe. NFL is here, man. I'm pumped up. So I'm giving out two season-long props, guys. The first one's going to be the Rams and the NFC West. This is probably going to be the best overall division in the NFL, in my opinion. But I'm all in on this Rams team this year. I think they have what it takes. They got a lot of hype going in this season, and I actually think they live up to that hype. Matthew Stafford's going to be coming on to this team, and I know that's a lot of the hype around him. And I actually think he's going to be the X factor. He's a better leader. He throws the ball. Uh, he has the cannon for an arm. Way better than Jared Goff, in my opinion. And I think that's going to mix well with this team. They have all the right pieces. They're, they were 10 and 6 last year year again they did pretty well but again the defense and the rushing game got them through that the passing game was always hit or miss but I think Matthew Stafford really gives this team the extra edge like I said so again I'm all in on this team and I think they win this division this tough division to say the least so that's my first one and then moving on to the Chargers that will be my uh, other season long prop it will be the AFC West guys and I know this one's going to get a lot of hate because the Chiefs are in there they've won six times in a row again they're a strong football team but if we look at this Chargers team they've kept games close throughout the years the last few years and now I'm being optimistic here but Justin Herbert he was amazing guys his numbers were fantastic last year 36 touchdowns 31 of them passing 396 completions eight games with 300 or more yards he's the real deal and again I'm not comparing them to Patrick Mahomes at all I'm just saying he is the real deal as far as quarterback goes and then if you look at all their pieces they added guys like Jared Cook Josh Palmer they're going to be a good offense this year and I think if they just eliminate the mistakes and they stay healthy I feel like that's the biggest thing with this Chargers team is staying healthy and I get every NFL team they go through injuries but I just feel like the Chargers have been hit a lot uh, throughout the other years and then the last part I wanted to say about this Chargers team the hire of Brandon Staley from the Rams he was overseeing their defense this is a top ranked defense guy so bringing him on I really think this is going to gel well with him and Justin Herbert here I think their special teams are better and all overall they're just a better football team and I think they're really going to stand out in this AFC West and I think it just comes down to the Chiefs and Chargers for me so those would be my two plays that uh, the Chargers plus I got them at plus 450 I think the prop is and then as far as the Rams go plus 180 so both great value plays and that's what I got Joe Kevin brought us coming right out giving us two big plays Kevin I want you to stick around as we go through the show and maybe comment on what everybody else is doing because you are our NFL aficionado Kevin do us a favor do us all a favor tell our viewers what they can expect for you NFL this season packages discounts seasons whatever you want them to know the mic is yours yeah, I appreciate that. So again, yeah, you can head over to my page on Sports Memo. I'll be having NFL plays all year long, just like Andy Lang. I'm big into props myself, so that's something you can find there as well. And then over the last five seasons, I've been hitting 59.67% in NFL, so it's been really good for me. So hopefully that continues as well. 
Mr. Kevin Brooks. Kevin, please stick around. Maybe you can critique each one of our NFL uh, predictions. I'd like that very much. We're going to go right into Ronald. You know him as you, Capper. Ronald Kabang. Ronald, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing well, man. We're honored to have you here today. If you could give us just your first uh, NFL prediction, I'd like to know it. I know everybody out there wants to know it. Yeah, for sure. So my first one's going to be uh, Mac Jones uh, to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. I, I think this one's probably not going to be a surprise to a lot of people with the news about Cam Newton. Um, but, um, you know, he's at plus 200. It's, it's not the best value. But out of all the rookie quarterbacks, I think he has the best position. He's in the best position to win games. Uh, the Patriots even have a shot to, to possibly make the playoffs. Um, they have a top offensive line, a great defense, uh, with solid protection and field position throughout the season. You know, he, he's going to be able to do enough just to, you know, to win it. Um, even if Trevor Lawrence puts up slightly bigger numbers, with the Jags being a, a weak team overall, um, he's going to have to put the team on his back week after week in forcing plays. And, and by doing that, he's going to force – he's going to turn those forced plays into turnovers. Um, and that's kind of like what I see there. Um, like I said, Mac Jones is at plus 200, not a lot of value, but I think it's a small play. There you go, Ronald Kabang. You know him as you, Capper. Mac Jones, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Ronald, what do you have going on for everybody out there who wants to know, who maybe want to take take advantage of some of your discount packages, months, seasons? What's going on over at Sports Memo? Uh, right now, I mean, I'm pretty excited for the, the, the NFL season. Um, this is my first season doing the, the Circus Sports Contest, uh, the Millions. Um, so I'm going to have a lot of my plays there. Not all five every week is going to be something I bet on. I try to limit the number of bets I have um, just just uh, just because of uh, percentage-wise. Um, but, yeah, so uh, you're going to be seeing a, a lot of those um, circuit contest plays as my actual uh, uh, sub- subscriber plays. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronald Kabang, you know him as you, Kepper. Kevin, any comments on Mac Jones, Rookie of the Year? No, I'm, I'm going to let him take it on that. Definitely did not, uh, as far as do an analyst breakdown like he just did on it, so I'm going to stay out of that one. There you go. Yeah. We're, we're going to move on over to one of my favorite people. He's been a friend to me for over a decade. You know him as the body. We call him Jesse the Body. Sure, Jesse, welcome to the NFL Football Forecast. Thanks, Joe. Uh... I guess I'm looking at a division winner that probably uh, there's been a lot of talk about. Uh, there's a lot of people that seem to like this play. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, the AFC South, and uh, you know it should be a two horse race with uh, the Titans and the Colts. And uh, I like the Titans. I mean the Colts are off to a bit of a rough start. You know they've got uh, the Wentz injury, even though Wentz is now apparently on track that he's hoping to start in Week One. He's coming off COVID. Uh, he hasn't had time to play in the preseason. He's, you know, he's just jumping into the fire, so to speak, and he's coming off a pretty terrible season with Philly. And uh, I think you really got a question if we've seen the best at Carson Wentz at this point. Uh, I'm not sure that Wentz is ever going to get back to where he was in his first couple years of the league. We've seen this before with guys like RG3 and some of these one-hit wonders that come out. They have a couple good years, and for whatever reason, they don't ever get it back. Maybe I'm wrong, but that that could be Carson Wentz's future. Um, and uh, the Titans, you know, they got the NFL's leading rusher, and they added Julio Jones. Uh, I think they're a solid team with a solid quarterback, ranked number four in offense last year. It's only going to get better this year, I believe, with a healthier offensive line, more weapons. Um, so, yeah, I think the value's on uh, Tennessee to win the South. Mr. Jesse Shule, Tennessee Titans to win the South. Jesse, I mean, I've been a friend of yours for many years, but I've been a fan for even longer. You're always on the leaderboards year in and year out. I see you at the in the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, the end of the year. You're always a leaderboard perennial. What do you have going on over at Sports Memo as far as NFL goes? I already got a couple plays up for week one that I've had up since prior to preseason even, which is every year it's a hobby of mine to, you know, try and spot the weak lines uh, when they offer the lines early like that. And I got a free play up on a total that you can check out at Sports Memo, but uh, what you can look forward to is I, uh, I've i done awfully well with the player prop bets in the NFL, um, individual player performance totals, mm-hmm. uh, receiving yards, uh, anytime touchdowns, this kind of thing. So, So you can look forward to seeing a lot of those type of plays every week from me. 
The one and only Jesse Shul. Jesse, thank you. Kevin, let's loon over to you. Kevin, what, how do you feel about Jesse's, uh, Jesse's prediction on the Tennessee Titans? I like it a lot. Honestly, I think we're, a lot of us agreed on it. I did have a question for you. As far as team totals go, I see it sitting at nine. Would you take that over? Uh, or do you just like the price for the division? Because I know the division price, as far as the numbers I have, minus 115 to win the division. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then as far as a team total, it's just over nine, minus 110. So I just uh, wanted to know your thoughts on that, if you had anything. I think 10 wins will probably take the division. Based Same. on what I I'm see glad from you the said Colts. that. So, yep. there you, go. So I, I, you know, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. But I, I like I like them better just to win the division. Fair enough. Yeah, I think Thank from you. from my side, I think the just going over nine, I think that takes it as well. So whatever you're feeling, but that was I think my the take. Chances Joe. are that if one hits, both are going to hit. You know, I agree. There you go. One hundred percent. Yep. Kevin brought us. Thank you, Jesse. Always, always a pleasure. We got another play cover from Jesse shortly. Guys, we're going to move on over. You see them beat up Sylvester Stallone in Rocky Three. We call him Clubber Lang. You know him as Andy Lang. Andy, tell everybody what you got going on in NFL, please. Let me pile on the Colts here since I live here in <laughs> Indianapolis. Um, so we had not one but two foot surgeries on uh, on Quint Nelson and Carson Wentz. Uh, apparently, they were doing two for one specials. Uh, <laughs> buy one foot surgery, get the second one at half price. It was a Groupon, so they got that. Uh, we are one of the least vaccinated teams in the league, so you got to believe COVID protocol is going to jump up and bite the Colts every time. T. Y. Hilton is out with a disc injury. Uh, I know you guys are wondering, oh, man, he must have taken a big hit. No, he heard it on an airplane. Uh, he was riding, flying on an airplane, and he heard a disc. Um, in the last five days, three guys who refused to get the vaccine have been placed on the protocol. Wow. That's a starting wide receiver, our starting center, and our starting quarterback. That is how the – that we it's the season hasn't started. So <laughs> – when you say it's a two-horse race, I would say it's a one-horse race in that division. Just you got Jacksonville can't block anybody. The Texans are run by their team chaplain. I, this is a it's a horrible division. When I when I read that thing on T. Y. Hilton with the airplane, that was cracked. I didn't think it was real at first. I, I, I pile on T.Y. Hilton, and I got to say this. Um, I, 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 actually, I actually know him a little bit. I referee sports, and his kids play basketball and flag football here. And T.Y. Hilton, if you want to root for a really good man, root for T.Y. Hilton. This Some guy is he is so awesome with his kids, and, and everyone loves him, and he shows up to every single sporting event his kids are at as long as he's in town and not on a road trip. T.Y. Hilton is one of the most awesome guys. Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, root for T.Y. Hilton. <laughs> I'm serious, serious. Love Sometimes that. you got to root for the good guys. All right, let me get to it. Uh, let's, let's, let's make people money. I'm going to take – uh, for the season, Christian McCaffrey under 1,850 and a half yards rushing and receiving. This is such a monster number. <laughs> Everything has to go right for this number to go over. Uh, so he went over in 2018 and 2019. He needed 326 touches in 2018 to get there. He needed 403 touches in 2019 to get over. And what happened in 2020? Ankle sprain, injury. shoulder injury, quad injury. Now, I will say Carolina did the right thing. They were out of the playoffs, and they did not put any, any unnecessary wear and tear on that body. But with this total, I mean, 1850, if he misses any games with injury, the under is going to hit. Only nine running backs have gone over this total in the last four years. Panthers have a new quarterback. They only rushed for 1,700 yards as a team last year. Their offensive line comes into the season ranked 30th, as they have a ton of new faces. So he's going to have to play at least 15 games. The offensive line has to exceed expectations. He can't lose any touches to anyone else. He has to click immediately with Sam Darnold. And schedule-wise, he gets two games against Tampa. Two games against New Orleans, a game against New England, and a game against Washington. That is, that is six games against top 10 rated defensive fronts by Pro Football Focus. Everything has to go right for this over to hit. It's way too much to ask. The number's too high. I'll take the under. Question. Are you yeah. still taking him first overall in the draft, though? No. What? No. Who are you taking? No. Uh, I'd take Dalvin over him. No. I don't I don't trust that team. I don't trust I don't trust the Panthers. Okay, fair enough. I like the breakdown though a lot, especially because Great everything breakdown. has to go right. Yeah. 
You're right. Makes a lot of sense, Andy. I'm going to go out to the casino right now. Uh, first, got to go underneath my mattress, go pull out a couple of 10-dime stacks, and go take care of that. Andy Lang, Wager Talk, what do you got going on NFL for our viewers? Uh, we have a, a uh, season uh, uh, player future and team total wins. That's up on wagertalk.com. Uh, we hit 70% of those uh, last year. Wow. So, yeah, wow. yeah, really, really proud of that work. Wow. And we've got, uh, I believe, 11 plays up right now, uh, waiting to see what happens after this last weekend. So I encourage you guys to go get that. Uh, player props are specialty. You can find us on Prop It Up, uh, Wager Talks show, where we focus on player props. And uh, we'll be doing that every week. Got to love Andy Lang. Thank you, Andy, and thank you for chiming in, Kevin. We, that's why I wanted you to stick around, because you got such great insight to the NFL. We appreciate that. Well, guys, it's time to adjust those microphones again, because I'm going to give out my first NFL prediction. It takes place in the NFC East right now, sports fans. Odds makers have the Dallas Cowboy easily walking away with this division. Let's put a pin in that. We're going to circle back around and get back to them. Let me go on to say I don't expect much from the Philadelphia Eagles. Heck, I don't even think the Eagles expect much from themselves this season. No one could argue that fact. The New York Giants, come on. Sports fans, listen, I'm a New Yorker. I live in Vegas. Probably didn't guess I was a New Yorker, but I live in Vegas 31 years. Guys, I know the New York Giants team. I'm going to tell you right now, Phil Simms, Joe Morris, and Lawrence Taylor would have to come back right now, and this team still wouldn't be a 500 team. And I'm not sold on the Dallas Cowboys, guys. I know that they're America's team, and I don't want to ruffle any feathers. You know what? I don't have a problem ruffling any feathers. But the Dallas Cowboys, I'm not going to argue they don't have any talent. They have some talent. I'm not going to argue that. But having talent and winning a division are two entirely different things, sports fans. I don't like Dak. I don't care whose feathers I ruffle. I don't think he makes great decisions. I think he's injury prone. And I don't think he's a team leader. All right? We're going to go back. We're going to go one further, guys. Their defense has more holes than the damn Titanic. Let's face it. Every year we hear how great this defense is. And every year. Every year they blow it. It's not a good situation. Maybe the problems they have on offense affects their defense. But let's talk Turkey. Their defense does not look great again. All right. Their special teams. All right. I'm going to catch hell for this. Their special teams belongs in special ed. They make a lot of mistakes. They make a lot of mental mistakes. Let me tell you, I don't see mistakes like this made in the pop water level. They make a lot of mental mistakes. It's embarrassing. And I'm not crazy about their coach. I know he had his heyday. Great. I don't like the situation altogether. I'm not paying them because I don't like them. Actually, I grew up a Dallas Cowboys fan. So for me to say this, I really mean this. This leaves sports fans, one team in the division, the Washington football team, solid quarterback core, hungry ball carriers, one of the NFL's most underrated defenses, and unlike the Cowboys, and this is the clincher for me, guys, unlike the Cowboys, they have no pressure on them to win, which I think is going to make them a lot better team, and that's why they are my choice to win the NFC East, not the Dallas Cowboys. Forget about the other two teams. You can put them together, and they couldn't beat a high school team. This is the Washington football team's year to win the NFC East, guys. Kevin Broadus, come on. I know you want to chime in. Hey, no, I like that. Honestly, I like the breakdown. You had a lot of passion. You sold me. I'm, I'm, I'm riding with you, Joe. Okay, give me your credit card. I'll give you the rest of my place for twenty nine ninety five. <laughs> guys, I want you to know we want to have a lot of fun here, and I want to make sure it's unlike every other show out there. But we want to give you real serious content. The things we're giving to you guys, we want you to bet. We want you to play, and we want you to stand up and take note because we have the best there is. Jesse Shul, Shul Kevin Broadus, Ron Kabag, you know him as you, Capper, Andy Lang. These are some of the best and most respected cappers on the planet, and they are here because they want you to follow them. They want you to come over to Sports Memo and Wager Talk. Guys, there's a reason why Wager Talk and Sports Memo are here and everybody else is here. It's because they have the best cappers in the world. We're going to keep going. Uh, I, you know, uh, let me just let me throw a monkey wrench into this. And Kevin, hang on a second. I know you want to answer this. I want to go to Andy real quick. Andy, I read a column today just before I went on the air. Some very, very important people on another sports show, not a sports uh, handicapping uh, uh, medium, but on a sports uh, platform, said that absolutely, without hands down, Green Bay Packers win the NFC. What is your take on that? Well, they, there's no locks in the NFL. <laughs> so that's first and foremost. <laughs> they're, they're one blind side Aaron Rodgers hit away from uh, having the number three overall pick where they can draft another quarterback to take over for Aaron Rodgers. Uh, no, that, that that's silly. You, you can't... You can't 
these these season long things are one percent, two percent plays. Mm-hmm. You sprinkle on them. This is not a huge investment. Um, they can be winners, and they can uh, you know pad your bankroll at the end of the year. But uh, anybody that says that is uh, no longer. Uh, he no longer gets my respect if you're giving me a lock for someone to win a, com- a conference in the NFL. You so, know, yeah. I will tell you, Andy, if I may, living in Vegas and hanging out in sports books and casinos, uh, uh, you know, I see a lot of things. And, and God's, we could spend, forget about an hour show, we could spend years just talking about the stuff that we see inside the sports books. Uh, but it seems like years ago, like somebody would come in from like Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and bet fifty bucks on the Packers to win the Super Bowl, or an Ohio State alumni would come in and bet a hundred bucks on Ohio State to win the national championship. But over the years, we have seen, we have seen the 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 an increase in long term and futures bets on the collegiate and the professional levels. We see sharp, I see sharp betters now in the casinos betting serious money on long term bets. Now I do agree with you that it is. It, I mean. You got 30 teams that are going to be uh, against you. So 30 to 1. Of course, some of the teams you can rule out. However, I'm not somebody that loves to lock up their money for six months and not get great value for it. Personally, me, I'd rather bet more on a game or two during the season. But, Jesse Shull, let me ask you this. As far as Andy made a good point about, about long term on futures bets, how do you feel about these futures bets? Uh, I, I think I just agree that you, you sprinkle a little bit of money on it. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I, I would say avoiding anything that's, that looks like even money or, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it, it doesn't have a big payoff. If mm-hmm. you're going to if you're going to make an investment long term like that, you probably want it to pay pay pretty big. You know, uh, absolutely. I, Ronald, I'm not going to no, pick sorry. a team to win the Super Bowl unless I'm getting back 20 to one. Absolutely. And, you know, I think we can all agree, Ronald, that. The top three or four or five teams, the top highest highest odds, are usually teams that are going to be in the, or, or win the Super Bowl. You're not going to get a team 40 or 50 or 100 to 1. That's going to be there. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think uh, with futures bets in general, like you mentioned, like just, just having money stuck in a spot where you, you have to wait six months to, to get that money back in general. Like uh, These futures bets are like, uh, I say, quarter units, half unit bets, something that you're, you're – Kind of just uh, messing around with, but not not taking too serious. Heck, I've got to tell you, Ron, when I go to the store, the grocery store, and I buy something, I can't. I got my hand out waiting for my change from the cashier. So waiting six months really does it really does bother me. So unless I get real value on something, I can't invest it. And now, Kevin, everybody knows Kevin brought us, gave us both the Rams to win the NFC West, the Chargers to win their division. Kevin's going to be chiming in on each one of our picks uh, predictions for the futures on the next round. Kevin, hang on a second. I want to hit up Ronald to see what his second prediction is. Then I want you to chime in on each one of our our, uh, our predictions, please. Ronald, your second futures play for the NFL, please. Yeah, so this is going to be a fun one. I was taking a look at the uh, uh, quarterbacks to lead the league in passing yards. Um, I have two options. Uh, Josh Allen, he's actually plus 950 for this prop. Um, his passing yards over under is set at uh, 4,550 and a half yards. Uh, that's tied for fourth highest total for that um, prop. Um, and Allen has a strong receiving core. We see how Diggs, Sanders, Beasley, uh, and the deep third, Gabriel Davis. So, um, And he, he even has a Singletary, who's a solid receiving back as well. Um, so he's, he's a solid uh, QB that I feel like is, is going to put a lot of numbers this season. Um, my dark horse is actually Derek Carr. Um, plus 3,200, so that's a lot, you know, <laughs> plus 3,200 to lead the league in passing. Um, his over is uh, set pretty low, in my opinion, 4,150 4, yards. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel that's, I feel like that is something that people could take the over on. Um, uh, but, you know, Carr finished last season off really strong, other than uh, week 15 when he was taken out real early because of an injury. Um, in the four games that he did play, uh, fully, he averaged uh, about 350 yards per game passing. Um, you know, Ruggs and Edwards are coming into this season with more experience. Darren Waller has become an elite passing, mm-hmm. catching, pass catching tight end. Um, he, he has the weapons to do it, and, and the Raiders' defense is horrible. Um, so <laughs> they're going to have a lot of opportunities to play catch up. Sure. There you go. Ronald Kabang, you know him as you, Capper. Ron, once again, tell everybody what they can expect to, from you. This NFL season, please. Yeah, this NFL season, I'm going to take it week by week. Um, I, I'm really going to 
focus on you know fewer games possible uh, with with a higher percentage of, of possible wins. Um, uh, so that that's something that uh, that I really uh, uh, take into my my handicapping is really trying to get the best possible bets out there. Ron Cabang, you know him as you Capper. Go follow him over at Sports Memo. We're going to slide on over to one of my favorite people in the world, let alone in this business, Mr. Jesse Shul. He's got another prediction for the NFL. I know all of our viewers want to know. What do you got, Jesse? Well, Joe, I'm, unfortunately, I'm looking at the Dallas Cowboys and their <laughs> season win total, and it feels like you stole all my material. You already told us how <laughs> bad the Cowboys are, so i got nothing left to say. But I'm a big history buff. I really like uh, to, a student of history. I like my quotes. One of the things I like to say a lot in my promos is history repeats itself. And uh, another quote I like to use is uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again uh, and expecting a different result. And another one is uh, <laughs> the only sure thing in life is death and taxes and the Cowboys being overrated. And uh, it seems like every year the Cowboys are talking Super Bowl, and every year they're lucky to go 8-8. Eight and eight. And uh, I, I think this is another one of those years where the Cowboys are all hype and not enough substance. I agree with what you said about McCarthy. McCarthy had his heyday in a different era. It's a different era now, and whatever he brings to the table, I'm not sure he has uh, what it takes to win in, in today's league. Uh, certainly not enough to win a Super Bowl, or he hasn't shown that so far. But, uh, you know, Ezekiel Elliott uh, coming off a terrible season, not just his production on the field, but his behavior off the field. His uh, He doesn't look committed. Um, so, yeah, I think the Cowboys are in for another rough season, and i got a total of 9.5 under minus 160 at bet 365. You know, you're laying a bit of juice, but I just really don't see this. I mean... They're only going to need nine wins to win the division. And like uh, Joe said, I don't think they're going to get a sniff of that either. Great minds think alike, Jesse. I'm glad you said that. Before we go over to Kevin, I want to, to, to comment on that. Can you please tell everybody watching? Because every time you speak, everybody, it's like E.F. Hutton. Everybody just stops talking. They want to hear what Jesse Shul has to say. What do you got going on NFL this season, Sports Memo? Well, one of the things to look out for is uh, every week, right before the Sunday night football game, it's a tradition of mine to uh, attack the soft lines. So if you're a subscriber, you come to my page on Sunday night to see next week's games. What I'll, what I'll have for you is I'll have a soft line. You'll see a six and a half point favorite. It's going to be bet up to a nine point favorite by the, the next Sunday. But if you get it with me a week early, you'll get two, three points better, a better line than you're going to get by waiting a week and betting on game day. Jesse Shul says early bird gets the worm. Love it. Kevin, what do you think about the under on the Dallas Cowboys win total? Yeah, I definitely like love the play. But again, this goes back to kind of what Andy brought up. Like you're, how, how much do you actually go on this as far as the, like the whole season, like on your investment? And I, I think I speak for myself or maybe for Andy and Ronald too. But with props, like we go for the value. Like if you're going to bet on a season long prop, make it worth your value. So minus 160, that's my only disagreement as far as the price goes. But I love the play in my opinion. And I do think the Washington football team, like you mentioned, Joe, has a good shot at this division for sure. Well, thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Great minds think alike. <laughs> Glad to do I'm just so happy that we got this great panel here. And we're going to go right along to another great panelist, Mr. Andy Lang. He's got another NFL prediction for us. Andy, please. <laughs> it's funny. I, we've just been uh, dogging the same division, and I've got an <laughs> under <know>. again. <laughs> I'm, you know, we were laughing about you know the Colts and the Jags and the and the Titans, but at least Tennessee has some upside. Is this the only division where you can't really find an upside? <laughs> team? What is the upside in any of these teams? Like, like seriously, they talk about this division. It's like you know the upside is you know someone's got to win it. <laughs> like it's not an upside. It's not. It's not good. Joe, Joe, you brought up you brought up Washington, and I was talking about this earlier. Do you, let's go over Washington's seven wins last year real quick. All right, week one, Carson Wentz. They beat Carson Wentz and the Eagles. Congratulations. Then Andy Dalton and the Cowboys in week seven. Then they beat Joe Burrow 
in the game he blew out his knee while they were losing 9-7 to in the third quarter, so they win that game. Uh, they beat Andy Dalton again. Congratulations. Uh, they, get, uh, they beat Roethlisberger when the leading rusher for, for the Steelers that game was Anthony McFarlane. He had 15 yards rushing because they were so <laughs> banged up. Then they beat Nick Mullins, congratulations. And then their their win was week 17, where they had Jalen Hurts who got pulled and Nate Sudfeld came in because the Eagles were tanking. Those are that's your Washington seven wins last year. <laughs> like those are terrible wins, and yet I can't argue with that. They're probably gonna win the division. It's so bad. And I think one of the reasons they're gonna win is because Saquon Barkley's gonna have a bad year. I got him under 1,185 and a half yards rushing. So many things to like about this under here. And I'm not rooting against Saquon. I like him, but Pro Football Focus ranks the Giants offensive line dead last. They are the only offensive line that ranks in the bottom eight of both pass and run blocking. So talk about it's not even a question mark, it's an exclamation point. Uh, and you got to believe opposing teams are just going to want to take away Barkley. So 2018, he averaged five yards a carry. That went down to 4.6 in 2019. Small sample size, but before his injury last year, 19 carries, 34 yards. Very small sample size. Um, it's coming off ACL and meniscus tear surgery. He just started doing seven-on-seven -seven drills last week, and the Giants are saying he, quote, should play in week one so you get a very confident should play in week one uh inside the division washington you know you you got to accept that they do have a very very good defensive line uh philadelphia has a very high ranked defensive line coming in the season um they get check this out they get the broncos rams bears and buccaneers on the schedule as well <laughs> not a lot of running room there i see a very <laughs> i see a really slow start in Coming off ACL and meniscus tear, it's probably going to nag him a little bit. I don't see him playing all the games, and I find it really, really hard to believe he's going to get over this 1,185 yards rushing total. Easy underplay for me on this one. There you go, Andy Lang under Saquon Barkley. And I don't have anything against Saquon Barkley either, but if you ever watched him on an interview, not the brightest guy in the NFL. I've got to tell you, guy's so dumb he couldn't spell IQ. Takes him about an hour and a half to watch 60 minutes. I mean, I can't believe he graduated from a, such a prestigious university. But Andy Lang, love you like that, huh? Andy Lang, I'm going to call from Saquon Barkley now. <laughs> uh, Andy Lang under on the Saquon Barkley. Andy, what's going on at Wager Talk NFL for you? Uh, NFL should be a good season for player props as well as uh, season and player futures. Uh, just go on over there and uh, check it out. You can get week long. You get three days, uh, month long. We're coming off. August was our best month of the year. We are up over 61 units in that month, and we look to continue the momentum going into the NFL season. A lot of good stuff. Gotta love Andy Lang. Well, guys, I have my second prediction for everybody out there. Adjust those mics again. I'm very excited about this. Didn't even take a Viagra. Very excited. My next NFL prediction, you like that, huh? My next NFL prediction takes place in the NFC West. The odds makers have both the Rams and the Niners about the same price to win the division. I get it. It's the start of the season. And these two teams on paper look good. But, folks, football is played on the gridiron. Not on paper. I don't see the Rams as wonderful as oddsmakers do. They're good, I'll give you that. But a key injury, and this team will be bagging groceries come January. Take it from me. Not in love with their backup quarterbacks or even their ground game. Yes, they do have some big names on the receiving core. But, and once you find out, I love a very big but. But, if your quarterback has no time in the pocket to throw the ball, what good is it? Then there's San Fran. Listen, he's Italian. I got a root from Jimmy G, Jimmy Garoppolo. But, guys, he's more danger prone than Samuel L. Jackson's character in Unbreakable. This guy goes to the refrigerator and breaks an ankle. I mean, it's between him and Brian Roethlisberger every year that they get hurt. Who gets hurt first? That's the prop I want to see. That's a tough prop to figure out. One of them is going to get hurt by week three or be week four. Then what happens to the team? Guys, if he goes down, the offense sputters badly. The Arizona Cardinals, they're a feisty bunch. 
but they just don't have the horses to run. I'm not going to badmouth them. They badmouth themselves. That leaves the experienced, well-coached Seattle Seahawks. I think the roster knows this most might be the last hurrah for this team to go anywhere together. They've got a nucleus that's been together for a long time. Look, Ronald's saying yes because he knows this team very well. Guys, when at home, when they are at home, it is still one of the toughest places for a visitor to come into and compete. It is a loud, crazy stadium with crazy fans. It's tough to go into Seattle and win, and they are solid at all key positions. Let's not forget this team. They may have more crafty veterans than almost any roster in the NFL. That's why they're my pick, a surprise pick, to win the NFC West. Kevin, you're salivating. You're chomping at the bit. Come on, give it to me, baby. Give it to me, baby. Hey, 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 hey. You know I disagree with that. But, again, I get your point as far as the veterans and, like, this, their last hurrah. But, like, again, just because you have to win or just because this is your season doesn't mean it's going to happen. But I like the hype, and I you had some good reasoning. And I don't have my Seahawks stats up right now, but I wish I could come at you right now. I really do. That's but right. Next I like week, the Flint. breakdown. Yep, That's I'll have right. It. Save yeah. the flavor next week. We'll go head to head. We'll have a whole different show. Maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll do it just in speedos with a lot of oil. We'll do some oil wrestling. It might be fun. I'm just kidding. Jesse knows me too long. Ronald's laughing. Andy's going. I can't believe I signed up for this, guys. We've got some great plays from some of the most respected handicappers on the planet. I'd like to say one thing. I want to give a promo out to something else, to to a brand that's very very important to me. I don't know sports fans of a single. Winning handicapper or winning sports better that doesn't utilize the gold sheet. I love the gold sheet. I have it every week. I subscribe every season. I love it. And guys, if you are not winning, there's a reason why. There's information provided the gold sheet. Go to the gold sheet. It's goldsheet.com. Go pick up at least one of their week's uh, information. I promise you it'll make a big difference. I love the gold sheet. I want to give them a big shout out. One last thing, guys, before I say goodbye to everybody. I live with the most wonderful woman in the world. I don't know how anybody takes me for 21 minutes. I know Andy Lang's ready to go to the bar right now. Um, anybody takes me for 21 minutes, let alone 21 years. But there's not just one winning D'Amico handicapper on the planet. There's now two. And the, and the second one, the prettier one, the more charismatic one. All right, believe it or not, somebody's more charismatic than me. My wife, Dion D'Amico, she's on top of the leaderboards over at Sports Memo. The wonderful folks over at Sports Memo have allowed us to do this, this two-for-one capper discount, guys. I got to give a shout-out because I can't believe they let us do this. Buy one capper for football season, get the second one absolutely free on some of our big football packages. I can't believe it. Got to give a shout-out because, guys, I may, I may be on the show with you guys for an hour or so every Friday. But I'll live with her the rest of the week, and she'll beat the heck out of me if I don't give her. No, I'm kidding. I just want to say that. It's a great promo we've got over at Sports Memo. Buy one, D'Amico. Get both for this season. Guys, I want to thank our guests. Mr. Kevin brought us. Mr. Dr. Chuck, who had some technical problems. I had to say it, Andy. Jesse Shul, I love you, Jesse. You, Capper, you know him as Ronald Kabang and Mr. Andy Lang of Wager Talk. I really want to say thank you to the amazing folks at your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs, Sports Memo. And most of all, guys, I want to thank all of you out there, our viewers and our listeners, for supporting us. Tune in each week and win. This is Joe D'Amico. Good luck and have a winning day.